All right, y'all. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to put up a coon. Uh, I got quite a few of them hanging here. Uh, pretty good amount, but we've been putting a good dent in what I got here this year. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys my setup. Uh, I bring all my coon in frozen. Um, I thaw them out on my floor here. I still have something to do today. But then once, once they're thawed out, they go in this shopping cart here. And then I'll flush them. Once I flush them, I turn them back fur side out, and then they go in these carts to be boarded later. So, anyways, guys, I'll get the camera set up here, and we'll get flushing. All righty. So, what I do, guys, um, I take these blue paper towels. I buy them from Menards. They're pretty cheap. So that's what I use to wipe my beam down. I fold it in half like you just saw, so I can get, I got this half I can wipe, then this half, then I turn it the other way and then I can get another two wipes. So I can get four, four coon done basically with one towel, but we're gonna get this nice big coon thrown on here. Um, I use vice grips to hold my coon on here. I believe I got that from Coon Creek Outdoors um, way back when I was just learning how to flesh coon. Um, but that's what I like to do. I know you can put stuff right here to keep them from sliding, but to be honest with you, I just don't have the belly to push on it. So that's why I use the vice grips, but, and I use the, the caribou knife guys. I really love this knife, especially for doing, um, if you're flushing big numbers of coon in a day, uh, I'd highly recommend this knife. It's a lot lighter than the necker. That being said, I used the necker for quite a few years and had no problems with it. Just wanted to switch to this, but as you guys can see, I start on the side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this side, take this coon down to this leg and then I'm going to pull them up. So use our sharp side of our knife here we'll get this coon opened up like so you start at the ear and go down you don't need to clean up the face unless there's a bunch of cheek meat up here and then see i switched to my dull side now we're going to start pushing down this one here just happens to be a pretty grisly one that i got for you guys so about to see see if i can't rip a hole in it i suppose but just working that gristle down with my sharp side um the biggest thing i will say is don't use your sharp side near this leg because you will rip that wide open this hair right here is very thin compared to the neck of this coon so i'm going to switch to my dull side again and get to pushing it down here um i just try and get everything above that leg um, and it's kind of hard to tell, but as I'm going through this leg, I'm turning my knife so I'm not trying to buckle that leg and tear a hole. But we got the top part of this coon freed up here. I'm going to go ahead and slide this coon up to his leg there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all this fat out of the armpit area. And then I'm going to scrape him down to however far my arms can get him. Uh, the main thing, guys, is just you guys will start to see it, but you see how that fur right there? Is starting to roll up if you try and push through that you're gonna rip that coon hide so don't try and push through that guys uh, you can see I'm kind of getting away with it a little bit here but I've done quite a few of them so I kind of kind of know the feel but then we're gonna flip it over to the other side we're gonna do the same thing get my clamps on on his face there we'll start to open him up this one's got a little bit of cheek meat up here. I'm just going to shave off of there. Switch to my dull side and start pushing. A little bit of gristle up here towards the back. I'm going to take off. Start pushing. And guys, I run my first shed. It's, what is it, 52 in here right now. It's a little warm for me. I like to keep it around that 48 to 50 uh, just for the comfort level of me working on pelts. If it's anything above 50, I usually start sweating pretty good. So we're gonna clean this armpit out, do the same thing. Take this fat down to there. And here we go, guys. Now we're gonna turn him over to his back. Now this is the hardest part. Actually, I feel a cockaburr down here. So I'll go ahead and show you guys so if you got a burr like this, guys, go to the base of your burr, pull the hair apart, and that burr will pop right out of there. So there's a little bonus tip for you. 
If you guys struggle getting cockapurs out, I'm gonna stretch this coon out all the way, clamp on his face again. We're just gonna start working this back gristle down. Now, this is the toughest part of the coon, especially on a bigger coon like this. I've had them where they have gristle all the way down the back. But you're just gonna use that sharp side until you get down to where you feel like you can start pushing that, which it all comes with feel, guys. Um, it's pretty standard to have a 30 to 40 coon learning curve as far as getting started, but I'm gonna switch over to my dull side here. Scrape him down. Pull him up to just a couple inches in front of where that fat is. And using the dull side, I'm just gonna keep pushing. Pretty simple guys, it's just really the feel of the knife is the biggest learning curve. You guys can see I just turned it on its side there so I can get this side down to where I want it as far as finishing out that leg. But it's more about just getting a feel for whatever knife you want to use in it. Like I said, it takes 30 or 40 coon usually for you to start figuring it out. There's no, no magic trick to it that I can tell you. You just kind of got to do them. But switch it over to the other side there. Again, my clamp's still holding it up in the center of the back there. Got all my fat cleaned up. Now this is a big coon, so I'm going to slide it up again. Clamp it. And you guys can see when I clamp it, I'm not wrenching on my clamp to get it really tight it's just sitting on there holding it is all it's doing not really applying any pressure it's just holding it and then i'm going to go down both both sides of the base of the tail here you guys can see we got some fat there right at the tail um the tail really guys if you're selling to the fur market not that important you don't need to spend an hour trying to get it clean I always just make sure it's pretty clean up to the base of the tail because when they go to sell this for the fur market they're going to cut that tail right off of it anyways. So tail's not that important guys but I'm going to turn him over towards his leg here. Get that flank all cleaned up. Like so. That side's good. As you guys can tell, I got it in perfect working length for my arms, where I'm not constantly bending over all the time. It saves my back quite a bit too. But we're just gonna take this one down to the end of that flank there. Pretty fat coon here. It's a nice, probably a 4X coon easy. Nice big one. I'll get that flush down to there. Now I'll take my clamp off. You're gonna flip it over. And then here's your penis hole on the coon. Um, I'm gonna end up cutting that off in the boarding process. So it's no big deal, just get the fat off from above it. Clean up that belly. And like I said, I'm gonna take this coon. I'm gonna turn it fur side out. And then it's going in the cart. And then I'll just keep doing that over and over and over again. As you guys can see, my fat bin here is getting pretty full. Uh, I built this myself. I really like it. I can hold about 80 or 90 coon worth of fat in here. And I've been fleshing quite a bit this weekend. So, Anyways, y'all, the next step will be the boarding process. So, See y'all in a bit when I'm boarding. All right, y'all. So we're going gonna to put a coon on a board here now. Uh, you guys can see I got my boards marked with my sizes. But got a coon pulled out of one of my shopping carts here that's already been fleshed. We're going to throw them on the board here quick. I'll show you guys how I do that. <clears throat> Get my board. It's a nice big coon. It's going to be close to a 4X coon probably. Snug it up. That's what I do to snug them up, guys. I just hit it on the floor good once. There we go. Yeah, it does look like it's gonna be a 4X can. So, what I do is I'm gonna try, I'm gonna pin this up basically and kind of just show you guys at the end what what it should look like. But you're gonna go into the corner of the base of the tail here, pull down, and notice how I'm not wrenching on it. I'm just kind of snugging it up. I'm not really I'm not trying to overstretch it by any means. 
But we got both sides of the base of the tail pin. Now we're gonna come around here, get our legs, and I go up from the bottom of the leg about an inch, um, and then pull down and pin it. Same thing with the other leg. Pin it, and I spin it back around to the back here. And I do four pins and four pins on each side. Um, I'll, I'll give you guys a better look once I'm done with it here, but basically every, I don't know, half inch or so, uh, I put a pin in this, this base of the coon here, trying to get it as straight across as I can. Um, and then I come over here, got this little side flap here. I just pull that snug so it's in a straight line wrapping around that board there. Um, that'll give you the best advantage for your size. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. my last pin. Now time to wrap it around the edge here again, like so. There we go. I'll give you guys kind of a look here. Um, before I do the tail, that's about what it should look like here. You guys can see I didn't exactly get all the fat out of here, but it's the tail. They're going to cut it off anyways, so, and it'll dry perfectly fine, but we got a nice straight line across here, so now it's time to do the tail. Um, I'm gonna get the camera set up right in here and I don't do anything special with the tail I don't pleat it or anything I just come down a little bit uh, I'm gonna get a pin in that side probably reaching right in front of you guys then I'm gonna come over and put a put a pin over here and what I'm gonna do is two two and two at the bottom uh, is how I do it six pins in the tail just to Make sure it's opened up enough to where it's going to dry. Uh, this coon here's actually got a pretty short tail. Probably lost some of it fighting because he's so big. I'm not exactly sure, but there we go. Uh, that's how my tails look on my coon. Uh, you guys can see, I mean, they're all like that. So now I'm going to show you guys kind of what I do as far as wiping wiping the stuff off of it here. Uh, this helps with the drying process a lot. Uh, I just take, it's a belly board is what it is, it's an old one. And I just take it right up behind the ears, go down the coon once, and you guys can see how much fat that pulled right off of there and grease and stuff that pulled right off of that coon. That doesn't have to melt off of there now in the drying process. So now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna cut our window so you can see his, his penis hole is right up here. On my boards, I always go up to the penis hole. On the sows, I go up to the bottom pair of uh, nipples on the sow, but I'm just gonna cut right above that penis hole and just ever so slightly trimming off fur down the flank of this coon, like so. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And there's my window right there, guys. Um, that's about as big as I want my window. Um, and then we're going to trim up the legs here. Uh, but I bring my stretcher down on the floor for that. So, go ahead and bring my stretcher down here. Um, this is why cleaning up right around the, the legs doesn't matter that much as far as out here on the leg. Because I'm going to trim these up anyways. You guys can see where I'm cutting, you know, probably about an inch off of this. Off of the kin. Cutting that off. And it just looks a lot cleaner now that I trim that up versus if I were to just leave these legs on here. So, and we're gonna remove this bottom lip, come down here where there's tension and cut it, just like so. Grab a belly board. This is a must, guys. Use a belly board because if you don't, you're gonna be trying to get this coon off of here for far too long. Put a belly board in them here and we'll go hang them up here and That's a done coon, guys. Um, now we're gonna go to showing you guys how to um, take a finished coon off the board, so stay tuned, guys. All right, y'all. Now we're gonna be taking a coon that's already been dried off the boards. I just kinda wanted to show you my process of how I take them off and size them out. So on my bench here, I got notches. If, if you guys can see this, I got notches for the sizes, so large, 
extra large 2x 3x and so on and so forth so I lay the nose of the coon at the end of the table here flush with the end and that tells me the size of my coon when I'm pulling them off the board so I'm gonna get the camera set up here and I'll show you guys how I take them off the boards here we got a nice coon here all right so we got our coon here um, just gonna pull the pins out of him obviously <clears throat> Gonna kind of show you guys because I wipe my coon down with um, mineral spirits to really give them a nice dry clean look. I'll show you guys the difference here in a second. My pins pulled out, belly board come out. Okay, so if the camera will pick that up, you guys can see how this coon is still sweating a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is, and these are just old. It's an old towel that I cut up is what it is, but I'm going to put my mineral spirits on here. Um, I, I usually apply mineral spirits to this towel about every five can. We're going to wipe this can down with this rag of mineral spirits. And then we're going to just wipe it down with another rag that has nothing on it, a nice clean rag. And I'll show you guys the difference it makes with this can. Um, my strings are going all over the place, but if you guys can see that, now it's just a nice, clean, dry can. So, I'm going to pull them off the board here. Put my board over there. If I can get the camera to show you guys my sizes on the table here. Um, this can is going to be a 3X can. So what I'm going to do with this can is I'm going to take it over to my carts here. You guys can see my carts. I got them sized. I got 2x, 3x, and then 4x over here. So this one's going to go in the 3x cart. And then I'll hang them up and sort them by size, guys. Um, you guys can see I got 4x can, 3x can, 2x can um, going the whole width of my wall. And then I got some 3x can that were overflowing over there, too. So that's how I do it, guys. That's how I keep them organized. Um, Thanks for watching. I hope you guys took something from this video and until next time y'all.